Welcome to the Peptide Podcast. Today we're going to talk about how peptides might actually help heal your eyes. If that sounds wild, I promise just stick around with me. There are some pretty amazing early research that's showing how specific peptides may help with things like macular degeneration, diabetic eye disease, corneal wounds, and even age-related vision loss. We're going to break it all down in plain language, and I'll also explain how each peptide might actually work inside the eye. So let's jump right in. Let's start with AXT107. This is a peptide designed to help stop the growth of abnormal blood vessels in the back of the eye. Now, these rogue abnormally growing blood vessels are really a major problem in conditions like wet macular degeneration and diabetic retinopathy. AXT107 is an injection that's given directly into the eye that targets VEGF and angiopoietin receptors, which are two major players in abnormal blood vessel growth. In animal studies, it not only stopped new vessels from forming, but also reversed existing damage. And more of a bonus, it forms a little gel-like depot in the eye that slowly releases over time, so it may last longer than current injection-based treatments that are available now. Now, if you've heard of peptides for gut repair or injury recovery, you've probably come across BPC-157. I know I've talked about it in multiple podcasts before, but it's also being studied for the eye, especially for corneal healing. BPC-157 eye drops seem to speed up corneal epithelial repair, which is the outer layer of your eye, while also reducing inflammation. In rat studies, it helped close up corneal wounds faster, which means it might help with things like dry eye, eye abrasions, or even post-surgical healing. In fact, while most corneal abrasions fully heal within about one to two weeks, BPC-157 eye drops have been shown to reduce the healing time by several days. This next peptide that I want to talk about is really intriguing. It's SS31. You might remember when we've mentioned it before for its potential in age-related and neurodegenerative conditions like Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, but now research are also exploring its role in slowing or even reversing age-related vision decline, which when given as an eye or subcutaneous injection can help. This peptide goes deep, literally into the mitochondria of retinal cells, helping them work more efficiently. And in aging mice, SS31 improved contrast sensitivity and even reversed some vision loss. So it's not just slowing decline, it may actually restore your eye function. The next peptide is P21. P21 is a neurotrophic peptide, which means it helps keep nerve cells healthy. In the eye, that's a huge deal for really preserving vision. P21 protects photoreceptors and retinal pigment cells while also calming inflammation when given as a subcutaneous injection. And in aging rats with retinal damage, it helps reduce nerve cell death and even slow degeneration. Now let's talk about visolutin. This is an oral peptide we discussed before in a previous podcast. As a refresher, it's important to remember that visolutin is a bioregulatory peptide that helps support the health of the retina, which is the part of the eye that converts light into the images that you see. It works by supporting the metabolic activity of eye tissues, helping maintain healthy vision, and really improving the eye's ability to adapt to stress, aging, or challenging environmental conditions that you might be exposed to. Think of it sort of like a nutritional support for the eye, especially helpful for people dealing with screen fatigue, bright light exposure, or chronic eye stress. This peptide helps support the eye's natural metabolic activity, which is key to really keeping the retina functioning well and protecting it from things like oxidative stress and environmental wear and tear. Think of it as giving your eyes sort of like extra support to stay resilient, especially when they're under strain. Visolutin may also enhance blood flow to the eye, making sure the retina gets the oxygen nutrients that it needs to really work properly. And that's especially important for people with conditions like age-related macular degeneration or diabetic retinopathy, where poor circulation and tissue damage are really part of the underlying problem. Another oral peptide is retinalumin. It is already being used in some clinical settings, especially in parts of Europe and Asia for retinal diseases. So keep this in mind, but it helps normalize vascular permeability in the retina and supports repair mechanisms. It's shown benefits in people with glaucoma and diabetic retinopathy, sometimes even improving visual acuity when given intramuscularly or as an injection around the eye, not directly into the eye. So here's where things start to feel a bit futuristic. Researchers have developed peptides derived from PEDF or pigment 
epithelium derived factor. PEDF is a natural protein that's found in the eye, especially in the retina. It plays a protective role by preventing damage to light sensitive cells. It also reduces inflammation and blocks abnormal blood vessel growth. PEDF is considered one of the most powerful natural antioxidants and anti-angiogenic or anti-blood vessel growth factors in the eye. They also help protect photoreceptors from stress and damage without needing gene therapy or injections. These peptides are being turned into eye drops that may slow or stop diseases like retinitis pigmentosa, which is a group of inherited eye diseases that causes the gradual breakdown of the retina, leading to vision loss that often starts with night blindness and then eventually progresses into having tunnel vision. So your vision on the periphery going dark. They also help with AMD or age-related macular degeneration, which we've mentioned this before, but I kind of just want to touch on what it is. This is an eye condition that affects the central part of the retina or the macula, which leads to things like blurred or lost central vision, especially in older adults. The next two peptides I want to talk about are PHSRN and FGLM amide. They are also being formulated as eye drops and are specifically focused on healing the cornea. They activate something called fibronectin integrin system, which basically helps the eye's outer surface cells stick together and heal faster. It's great for persistent epithelial defects or those stubborn runes in the eye that just don't really want to close. And finally, there's ALG1001, also known as Luminate. This is a peptide that is administered directly into the eye. Luminate is a first-in-class peptide drug that targets integrin receptors in the retina, which are key players in abnormal blood vessel formation. Instead of targeting the VEGF like a lot of the other current treatments, Luminate blocks integrins upstream, which prevents both the growth and leakage of harmful blood vessels, which can be really helpful in those with AMD and diabetic eye disease. It also has a bonus effect. It helps gently separate the vitreous gel from the retina, which is a process that we call pharmacologic vitreolysis. This is especially helpful for people with vitreal macular traction or VMT, which is a condition where the gel in your eye pulls too hard on that retina causing swelling or vision problems. In clinical studies, about 65% of patients had that pulling relieved after treatment. And this is a result that normally requires surgery. So this is a really good peptide that's going in the right direction. Now, just to clarify, I kind of want to brush on cosmetic peptides for the eye area that you may see that are already available, like eye creams with peptides like Matrixyl 3000 or creams and serums with copper peptides, palmitoyl tetrapeptide 7. Now, these are designed to help with things like puffiness, dark circles, and fine lines, but they really don't in- affect the internal eye. I just I just wanted to highlight that they work by stimulating collagen in the skin around the eyes. And while they're great for cosmetic use, they won't help with things like we were discussing before, um, like macular degeneration or diabetic retinopathy. So some words of caution. So most of the peptides we talked about today are still in preclinical or early clinical stages. That means they're promising, but a lot of these things are not FDA approved just yet. So please, just as a caution to the wind, no DIY peptide eye drops or injections unless you're working directly with a qualified provider because you can actually harm your eyes. And as always, if you're dealing with real eye problems, you should probably first stop and think about seeing a board service certified ophthalmologist and not just, you know, go and do some research on Google and and try to find out what peptide's going to going to help you. There you have it. It's a quick tour through this, what I would call a very exciting, ever evolving world of peptide therapy for the eyes from boosting mitochondria to healing corneal wounds. Really these peptides might be just shaping the future of vision care. So if you found this episode helpful or interesting, please share it with someone who stares at the screen all day, or maybe you have a friend that is really dealing with some very scary vision problems. 
And as always, thank you so much for listening to the Peptide Podcast. If you enjoyed the show and want to support what we do, you can head on over to our partners page. You'll find some pretty amazing brands that we trust. And by checking them out, you're really helping us keep that podcast going. So until next time, be well. And as always, have a happy, healthy week.